Yeah, so today we meet once more. I think now we are through with the uh, motor connections uh, circuits. So we can move on to the next phase, which uh, refers to the domestic installation in our NEC module 2 syllabus. You have to be familiar with the setup. Now, much of this, uh, is you are supposed to have done it in first year, but we'll briefly go through them to kind of revise your memory. And as, as I said, practical uh, bit is what is wanted in the market. Now here, I've drawn a single line diagram of the sequence of control equipment of power supply to a domestic installation. In the past, when they're supplying power supply to a domestic installation, they used to come from the overhead, they take the cable down, down underground, and then it comes up into a building, going, <coughs> it goes underground, and then into a building, and then the connections will be at ease. But nowadays the practice seems to be the other way around. They normally just come up from the pole, they connect to your building, and then it comes down. But the sequence remains the same until, of course, some few years back when the bit of token came in. So in this case here, domestic insulation, single phase insulations. So you have the incoming cable, normally sometimes referred to as the service cable, which is a single pole and a neutral coming in. <coughs> and then here, the intake point, there is a, a service fuse and a link. And then here, it comes to the energy meter. Now these two equipments, they are, they are supplied by the power supplier in our case, in Kenya, is the KPLC, and it's also their responsibility to supply them and maintain them. That is uh, the cutout and the energy meter. And then from the energy meter, there is what used to be referred to as the meter tail, which should be as short as possible so that nobody can interfere with it. And this one comes to the consumer's main switch, which again is a double pole before it goes to the main distribution board or to the consumer control unit. Now from the consumer control unit, maybe maybe have an extension to your house outside, then you can have a main, a sub-main consumer cable leading to some maybe sheds outside your main building. And then from this main distribution board, of course this one nowadays is, has been replaced by the consumer control the unit, from it, we have the final sub-circuits. These final sub-circuits are the ones cables going to where they actually the energy is being consumed. Mainly we have four basic circuits, the lighting circuits, uh, sockets, outlets, maybe you have got a water heater, and then maybe you have got a uh, cooker unit. And then sub-main, final sub-circuits, going to the circuits. And then the demarcation point, as I said, after the meter, below is the supplier equipment and responsibility. After the meter, it is the consumer's equipment and responsibility. So that used to be the standard arrangement until some few years back. Briefly, I'll talk about the other new arrangement which has come in, which involves our token supply. So basically, that's how the equipment should look like. Again common questions can be asked. Basically, that will be the sequence of control equipment. So, we are going over to have a look at a typical wiring diagram of all this. Since this one, if you explain it, or if you are given it, you should come up with a wiring diagram for how all this is connected, which is our next uh, topic.
Now here you've got a typical wiring diagram of the single line diagram which I've drawn here. Now the power supply cable comes in, there is what we call the cutout, which I refer to as the uh, intake points. There's usually a fuse and a link. Again, this is KPLC equipment, and then it comes on to the energy meter. From the energy meter, they go to main consumer switch, whereby you can isolate if somebody is working on these ones here. And then from the consumer's main switch, it comes on to the distribution board we talked about here. If it's a small installation, maybe this one will be either six or four final sub-circuits. Then we have got a life, a kind of a pass bar there connected. Now we can have fuses, or the common trend nowadays is to have circuit breakers. Fuses or mm, circuit breakers. Sometimes referred to as MCBs. And then we have got a neutral bus bar where we take off our neutrals. And then we have got an earth bar, an earth bus bar where we take off our ECC, earthing continuity conductor. Now, in what we call the PME, you'll find that the power supply earthing terminal will be connected to the consumer's earthing terminal. That is in the PME system. Otherwise, in the consumer's installation, he must have what we call a main earthing terminal, and from there he connects a cable which is connected to the earthing rod, which is hammered into the ground. The length and uh, how deep it should go, you need to take some measurements. When you finish your installation, you need to do some testing. And the testing you do will determine how that rodding will be the length of the rodding that you take in here. Sometimes you may be forced to take in some additional rodding or you go for some other arrangements of your earthing. But usually the PME is connected in areas where the earthing, the earth loop impedance is a problem. And of course, in Nairobi nowadays, in most of the installations, they tend to go for this kind of uh, arrangement whereby the power supply earthing and the consumer's earthing, they all join together together at one point. Now this one here, I think it's all, uh, you came across it in your first year. The only thing I want to talk about is the energy meter. Now you can see the energy meter which I've used here. The life is in the extreme left and then it comes out on the extreme right. And then the neutral are the ones in between and then you may have a nothing terminal where you connect the incoming cable to that earthing point or, and then you also take it into the building. Now of late, there are some other meters which are coming in. Now for this kind of installation inside, if you go inside the meter itself, Now, the meter here, the energy meter here, inside, there will be basically two coils. One will be a current coil. If you recall, uh, the meters, how they operate, there is a current coil in which this one will be carrying the current which is being supplied to the installation. So usually, the wire is thick. It's a thick wire. And then there is a voltage coil. Remember the operation of our uh, watt meter, there is a voltage coil which is thin. Which is thin. And then in the old meters, this is what we call our disc to rotate. There is a voltage here. Uh, this will produce a magnetic field. This one a magnetic field. This is the current uh, 
the current, this one will be the voltage. It calls your disk here to run through induction. And then this one rotating will measure the energy. So what I wanted to get right across to you is that in the diagram that I've drawn, I've drawn my L in and L out at the end. Then we have got the N in and N out at the ends. Maybe you've got your ECC connections out there. Now that is the standard kind of a meter the power people used to have before. Nowadays in the market, we have got a different set of meters where well, the principal inside operation is the same, but the connection is different. We find that when you get your meter, the arrangements of the terminals, this one will be L in, and then this one here will be L out, and then we have N in, then we have N out. So now this arrangement is different from this one here. The meters have noticed with this kind of arrangement. I think uh, one sample I came across, they came from uh, Germany. The connections are like that. Now you can see, if you get this one here, and you connect it in a setup like this one here, it will be a problem, because it will be live and a neutral straight away. So it's good. Uh, you also have an idea of the meter when you are connecting your consumer unit. Usually the energy people will supply the meter, then the contractor is the one to connect the uh, main consumer switch to the energy meter. So you need to be aware of this one here. What I've noticed mostly, what happens is the KPLC, once they come, they do their measurements, they have a habit of leaving this meter here to the electrician to do the wiring. If you don't understand this one's here, or even if not you are doing for a building, you go for the trade testing, you do your circuitry, you need to find out which meter it is, whether it is wired this type or this type here. And then you'll be safe in your operation. I think that's the only thing I wanted to comment. The other one is, in your consumer unit, it will depend on, you can have fuses or you can have circuit breakers. Now, the circuits, the final sub-circuits, these are the circuits which are taking power to where the energy is being utilized, is good. As a good principle of uh, installation, there should be correspondence between the wiring. In the earthing, the terminals usually are numbered, well, they are not numbered, but you can assume the numbering will be top to bottom. The bridge system will start from top to bottom or from left to right. So from top, this will be you are number one, and then number two, and so on. When it comes to your fuses or circuit breakers, we count from left to right. This will be your fuse MCB number one, and this one two, and so on. And when you come to the neutral, again, there will be terminals here. The first one will be terminal number one, two, three, and so on. So good practice, the other thing from the terminal number one should go into the same circuit as the neutral wire from terminal number one and the wire from MCB number one or fuse number one, they go to one circuit. And then number two, two the number two I think, number two MCB or fuse, and number three terminal from the neutral, they go together to one final sub-circuit. When it comes to tracing faults, it becomes easier and of course it shows some professionalism. Although it's simply a brushing of what you did in your first year electrical installation. Now, after this one, we are going to have a look at these final sub-circuits. Now, in your consumer units, the number of MCBs of fees you are going to have here in the market is to decide according to the building. And in the market, you can get one of four six or even up to eight. And of course, in the modern installation, this main consumer switch, when you're having MCBs, this one will be incorporated on the 
inside of this bus bar arrangement here. Your main consumer switch, your main consumer switch will be incorporated inside with the other uh, MCBs. But if you're using a fusing arrangement, this is how the setup will be. The main consumer switch will be separate and then the fusing arrangements. If you're familiar with the electrical installation, you should be having no problem in changing from the fusing arrangement or to the MCB arrangement. So briefly now, we want to have a look at a few of the circuit, uh, final sub-circuits, and we have a look at the control, what we call the control arrangements. The circuit, how do you control them? The ones that emanate from the distribution board or the consumer control units. 